Hey everyone, Paul here. Welcome back to Game Builder Garage. Now, in the previous video, we done this life counter plus the reset. If you missed it, make sure you go back to the previous video because it was a long one. Now, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be discussing the animation when you hit the alien. We've got the spin and we've got the jump. Now, that happens when we hit the alien. Just alike that. There we go. And we get a game over. So what we're going to do, it's not a very big one this one, but it's quite effective. And you can adapt this multiple ways for different types of scenarios. But if we zoom in quite a bit here now, right, now what we've got is a touch sensor set up to check the person. Now the touch sensor is visible and if we follow this blue line all the way along you can see it's linked to the alien. So when the alien touches the person we get an output. Now this output is put through the comparison node on and we've got a constant. So the constant is one and when we get a touch sensor we get a one as well so that that is is like an and gate when we get the touch equal in this constant then we map it just to scale it and we scale the output down this purple line all the way to the person's jump button you can see that jump so let's just recap on that. When the alien touches the person, we get an output. We compare it against one and then we map it just to give us the height of the jump. Now, depending on how long the A button is pressed will depend on the height of the jump. So we scale that map so that when we get one an input of one we get an output of 10 now that's just scales it because you can jump quite high as you can if i put the camera down there you can see how high we jump you can see how high when we hit the alien Now, as well as doing the jump, we also get two effects. We get the effect that you can see right there, which is a damage effect. And we also play a sound. Now, you can do anything with them. Now, as well as that, we do an action. Now, this is the part that is really useful. And it's not used by very many people. I've not seen it used on many tutorials that are out there so we've got the same sort of thing happening here we've got the output oh sorry no we've got the input as a constant again one and then we've got it from this comparison so when the touch sensor happens we get this now i could i could have I could have took this comparison straight from the touch sensor and I don't know why I didn't, it's the exact same thing. So when we get a touch and we've got the constant, then we map that. So remember here we get one as an output and we scale that now to five. So when we get one, it outputs five. And the reason that we want to output five so when we go down all the way down here to the action of the person depending on the number of the input the action will do different things now if we just look at the information on the person and we scroll down now action there the person will perform actions based on the value of the input now you get two 
you get celebrate, you get punch, you get kick, and you get turn. So by inputting five, you get it to turn, or you get it to spin, if you like. Now, you can also punch and kick. So if you're doing punch and kick, a good one for that, say you're making like a Street Fighter game, you could have punch mapped to the A button and kick mapped to the B button. And you could give them different value inputs based on, as we've seen, based on this mapping function. So instead of having the AND gate here, we could have this as A button. So when A is pressed, you could have it mapped to do three. And when B is pressed, you could have it mapped to do four. That way you can have different inputs go into the action. Hope you've understood this today. Basically, this whole lesson here is teaching us about touch sensors, like in the previous video, we've used an equals comparison here. I think I might have done this just to show you different ways of doing it because the comparison and the AND gate are basically used in the same way here. So when the person and that is the same, then it outputs. And then this is, is basically when you get that input and that input, they don't have to be the same value although they are the same value. So there's two different ways there. The, the, the comparison is very similar to the AND gate. Then we've scaled the outputs there to use a different action on the person. So when we hit the alien, we do a spin and we do a jump. <laughs> Hope you've understood this lesson. I know that we're going a bit more in depth with Game Builder Garage now. Hope you're keeping up. If you are, hit the subscribe button. Let me know down in the comments section if you're struggling with anything and we'll try and clear things out as, as a community. Discord link down below as well. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.